Um, well, I'm Kate Ashman and I draw comics. Um, mostly I uh, do internet comics. I you know, have a website called uh, Wadishins and I, um, I uh, put comics on, online basically. <laughs> well, the online comics thing is um, sort of come into being in the last 10 years or so and I think it's really quite interesting that there's pretty much no bar to entry. So uh, anyone who feels like making a comic can make a comic. And um, you know, as a result, it's quite easy to get a start there, as it, as it were. Um, a lot easier than it is to, say, pitch to a publisher, that's for certain. Um, so I just started making comics uh, for fun, just to amuse myself and friends. And um, then, to my surprise, other people started reading them and enjoying them as well. So um, from there, I really sort of fell in love with the whole process. Uh, I got into drawing, um, well, I. I did it all throughout school basically. Um, in um, I did a art GCSE in A level, and I um, read a lot of comics at the time. I read a lot of uh, manga, and uh, my art teacher let me uh, do a project about it. And um, I'd say that manga actually got me back into comics because uh, I hadn't. Obviously, I read them as a child. I read lots of uh, the Beano and uh, Dandy and Buster, which I don't think even exists anymore. Um, but I um, <clears throat> started picking up a couple of uh, manga books when uh, I was in um, when I was in secondary school, and um, I started on things like Ram and a Half, and they were just such fun. <laughs> it's you know the very outlandish ideas and uh, ridiculous characters, and um, just yeah, a real sense of fun about it, and um, it was just very different to what I thought comics were which was, I, I thought it was all superheroes, like, entirely, you know, Superman and things like that, and that didn't really interest me. Whereas, um, you know, some bizarre martial arts thing, that was actually quite, quite interesting. Um, and from there I started realising that there were actually other kinds of comics, and I uh, read things like Why the Last Man, and uh, other such, um, you know, quite divergent things and uh, yeah that was kind of what brought me back into reading comics so my style is quite cartoony and quite quite loose and it focuses on things like facial expressions and um, body language quite a lot because I uh, really enjoy drawing people um, it's uh, definitely not what you might call realistic. Um, it's uh, probably patched up from all sorts of things that I've read over the years. Um, I, read, I read a lot of manga for quite a while and um, things like, uh, oh gosh, I read a lot of Tintin when I was younger and um, the sort of simple characters but more detailed backgrounds uh, really look fantastic and that, that, you know, that sort of idea. Um, probably contributed quite a bit. Um, my process for making comics is, um, I'll come up with a sort of outline for the general story um, and then I'll um, sort of chop up the story into what I want each page to achieve and then I'll do the script and uh, then I'll, um, when I come to actually do the drawing, I'll do a uh, thumbnail uh, which is just a very, very rough uh, idea of how the page is laid out. Um, just an extremely tiny drawing um, and uh, then I'll um, uh, actually begin penciling it and uh, what I, I say pencil but I actually work entirely digitally at this point um, it's uh, I have a tablet monitor um, which is uh, basically you can draw directly onto the glass of the tablet um, and uh, I use a program called uh, Manga Studio um, which is kind of like Photoshop if they had comics in mind from the very beginning. Uh, so it does some quite interesting stuff with um, sort of word balloons and um, uh, panelling and things like that, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, so yes, um, I um, pencil it out in, um, in Manga Studio and uh, sort of following the thumbnail, but usually changing lots of things. Um, then I um, uh, ink over the top of that and colour underneath that and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's basically it. I don't like to time it <laughs> because if I look back on it, I think, oh my gosh, how long? Um, um, I've been inking the uh, eight pages for Dawn of the Unread. Uh, I've not quite finished it yet and it's taken me um, 12 hours so far. 
uh, that's solid work um, without breaks. Sort of, I have a timer that times how long I'm working, working. Um, I, I I would say it will take me probably um, probably another uh, three or four hours to finish the inking, and then probably another eight hours to do the coloring. Um, and the initial penciling would have probably taken about eight hours as well. So, oh well. <laughs> Uh, I've not drawn anything for poetry before now, and it's uh, been very, very interesting. Um, I was, uh, I, I'm not very well read on poetry, to be honest, so I was quite worried about accidentally uh, cutting up the sort of the meter of it, um, because obviously you can't just have a giant paragraph uh, in the corner and just have that be the, uh, the word bubble for the whole page. So I was trying to sort of strike a balance between um, having it laid out throughout the page in a sort of traditional comic book sort of flowing, you know, keeping the uh, the eye moving down the page way, um, while keeping the, the, the rhyme of the poem. Um, uh, hopefully I've achieved it. <laughs> it's uh, definitely been an education and certainly very interesting. Um, I have done small pieces of uh, collaborative work before. Um, I've uh, drawn a comic written by a, a friend and um, it's it's definitely a very different uh, feeling to it. Um, I tend to be when when I work on my own stuff, I tend to be adjusting little bits of the script down to the last minute, basically before I upload it. I'm changing words here and there. Um, it takes quite a lot of the pressure off to have uh, somebody you know have done that already and um, somebody who's you know actually actually a writer. <laughs> Character design is kind of. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that I really like to do. And when you have to work from a, a real photo, it, I'm not gonna say really restricts, it just, just it, it changes how you have to think about it. Um, luckily, I think a, pe a lot of people wear their personalities on their faces a fair bit anyway. Um, so if you, if you look at a photo or a, a portrait, you can extrapolate a little bit from that. Um, you can strike a balance and make it work. Um, hopefully, I know I don't know what some of the people who actually would have known these people would would agree <laughs> if they saw what I've drawn. But um, it's uh, it's it's more of a challenge, but it's also um, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of fun to to be challenged in that fashion, I suppose. If you'd like to come upstairs and uh, have a look at the uh, work that I've done for the chapter so far. Uh, okay, um, well this is my tablet monitor, which is the uh, monitor that I can draw directly onto. It's um, uh, called a Yenova, I believe. Um, it's a very nice bit of kit, but um, it lets me um, draw straight onto the the page, which is uh, a lot more easy than a sort of traditional tablet where you draw onto the tablet and it comes up on the monitor. Um, uh, this is the sort of uncolored first page of the, um, of the story. Um, and uh, I haven't begun the coloring yet, but the, um, the tablet allows me to do things like, um, well, as I say, draw directly onto it with a full pressure sensitivity, which is quite useful. Um, and the uh, roughs of it looked quite a lot different to the finished um, product, as is usually the case. Um, if I turn all those off, and then you can see the uh, rough working out as it sort of layers up into what it eventually becomes. <laughs> um, you can also see the perspective grid that I use to make the bookshelf as well. <laughs> Which looks a bit like a sort of confusing mess, but eventually it turns into a comic. <laughs>